This video will demonstrate how to send Morse code over the internet on Ubuntu 12.04 using just one piece of software called Mumble in order to send CW audio tones to the ICW server located in California. The Mumble screen is our ICW server as you see before you. In order to get Mumble, all you have to do, it's already in the Ubuntu Software Center as a basic package, just download that. When you install it, go through the, the basic set, uh, setup procedures, which are fairly self-explanatory. There's an audio setup. You can run through that. We're going to change that anyway, so you can bypass that if you want. And then there's a certificate generated. Just do the automatic generation of the certificate and continue on. Then you'll be greeted by a new uh, server listing, and you're going to need to click on Add New. So click on Add New and then put this information in it. And this is the uh, stuff that's going to need to go in there in order to connect to the ICW server in California. Under Username, go ahead and put your call sign, please. Everybody's using their call sign so we can identify each other as fellow CW hams. Click OK and then click connect and it'll take you to the server here it'll probably put you in like this only it'll be your call sign here first thing you'll need to do is go into the testing room and we're going to get some settings I'll show you how to get these settings set up the settings are a little bit complicated but not too bad for this video we're going to show you how to use pulse audio you should already have Pulse Audio on your system. So instead of ALSA, click Pulse Audio and just keep it at default. And for the output, same thing, Pulse Audio instead of ALSA and default output. Then change your values to what you see here. Voice activity, amplitude, voice hold all the way to the right. Every time the voice activation, it's sort of like Vox, is activated. There's just a little noise generated like a little pop or click or uh, audio crackle sometimes. So this helps to minimize it so that you're not cracking and popping every time you send a signal. So at 2.5 that gives, gives us enough time so that you have a little bit of a time to pause between words and between phrases and to think before you, you, you send your next stream of CW signals. Silence below, this is the Vox activation, and somewhere around here is pretty good. This VU meter is activated right now because I'm using the microphone to, for this video, and that's what this is picking up. Otherwise, on the sound card input, I have an external side tone generator from a code practice oscillator by Heathkit made back in the 70s. And I'm taking the speaker wires, instead of hooking them to the speaker, I'm hooking it to a cable running that cable over to a passive W3NQN audio filter then out of the filter into the mic in jack of my laptop and this is what it sounds like and the volumes is very important and I'll show you the volume setup in just a second but that's about where you want the max to be okay let's continue the mumble configuration settings here for audio input Compression, the quality is very important. Try to get the maximum quality. The audio per packet is kind of a play between uh, packet loss and latency. There's less packet loss if you go to the right and very low latency all the way to the left. So for our system, I can on this laptop I can usually do 10, but I would start at 20 and see how that goes if people are reporting a lot of pops and clicks on your audio because you won't hear it yourself because this is the transmit side but if other people are reporting hey you're popping and clicking a lot then you need to turn this up there's a way to test that in just a second I'll show you you can listen to your own signal on the audio output underneath the loopback test going to the server So you just would click, connect server and click apply and then everything you send is going to go back to, 
to the California server and right back to you. Nobody else is going to hear it but you, but you'll be able to hear exactly what your own signal sounds like. And we'll demonstrate that in just a second. This audio processing on the audio input is very important. You want the noise suppression off, amplification all the way to the left at 1. On the audio output tab, again, pulse audio is the system, device default, default jitter buffer. Again, this is a play between latency and pops and clicks, but this is something that you'll notice yourself. When other people send CW on mumble, and you hear it. If you hear a lot of pops and clicks, you can try changing this to see if there's less. And if there is, then this is a system for you to be able to change it to, to get the right settings. The lower to the left, the faster you're going to hear them. The more to the right, there's just a slighter bit of delay and a little more buffering ca you know, capability. So there's a compromise here. You have to kind of piddle around with that. Start at 30 and see how that works. If you don't hear too many pops and clicks on everybody, you're doing pretty good try lowering it one notch and then see how that goes and then one notch after that until you start hearing them and don't worry about positional audio you can leave that unchecked loopback test let me show you this now you'll need to try this out server so connect your audio to your mic in jack and you'll need to pick up the mixer make sure that underneath mic you have record checked and this is how loud it's going to be to mumble you want to unmute it so you can hear it so you're going to listen to your own side tone through your computer so the computer is able to hear what's coming through the mic jack or the line in jack which the line in jack's better because it's less noise but if all you have is a mic in this will work So let's click apply and see how this goes. And again, it's picking up my mic, so we're getting multiple. So that's the time I hear it. It's the time it goes to California. Back. Let me get rid of this here. And so it goes to California and back, which is not that bad. Now I'll show you what it, how quick it is when we turn all this down. to 10. Let's hit apply. Let's go to the audio input. Click it down. So this is as fast as it gets. Let's try that again. Server hit apply. Send a tone. Okay. And I'm also going through a little bit of delay since I'm using... Yeah, hold on a second. Okay. Uh, since I'm using... Uh, VMware for this demonstration. Since on my own system I, I'm using the Jack Audio system which will, will come future in another video. But this is very easy to set up using the Pulse Audio since all Ubuntu usually comes standard with the Pulse Audio. Okay, so on our website which is right here is our main information channel we have a video on how to get your CW audio tone into your sound card jack. So on my key here, I took the wires off the speaker, ran them to a cable, plugged the cable into this W3NQN filter, and out of the filter to the line input of the sound jack, of the sound card here. Now setting the volumes, If you can pick up the Noam Alsa mixer, it's, it's pretty nice, and you can get that either in Synaptic Package or in the Ubuntu Software Center. The capture, when you hit record in your mic, the capture will control the volume. So let's show you. Go to the mumble, configure settings, and let's test this here. And if this is critical, you don't want this to be too loud, because if it goes too far to the right, it's going to cause the mumble AG circuit to kick in, and it's going to distort the CW slightly. The capture will be, uh, determine how loud this is, so I'm just going to hold it down and play with this capture button. So that's a little bit too high. So let's turn it down to about right at about there. there. 
that's in pretty good shape right there. Now this right here, this column, will determine how loud you hear it as you open it up and unmute it. You'll be able to hear whatever's coming in the mic in the line end jack, you'll be able to hear it. But this one controls how much goes to mumble. Yeah, let's turn it just a little bit there. So right about there is about right. And that'll keep it under the AGC threshold and you won't activate it and it won't it cause a little bit of distortion on your CW. That's the main setup for that. And under messages, if you don't like get notifications, you can uncheck mark these so you don't get a bunch of pop-ups. That's the main screens there. And let's go up to the ICOM room here and see if we can hear anything. My microphone for the video is activating this. Now if you send CW as normal, we have a remote here that will take that CW. We have a remote set up here on the ICOM 7035 on another computer. And any Morse code that comes in through Mumble is converted to a keying voltage that keys the ICOM. So you can hear and send Morse code just like you normally do on Mumble. If you're an uh, official ham with a registered call sign, if you just follow this protocol here, you can, you're more than welcome to use this remote. We have it set up on a, a couple stations here usually. This is the fog net frequency for a QRQ net that happens on Mondays and Thursdays. We also have a couple nets during the week, one on Saturday at 2.30 Central Time here on the ICW server and on Wednesday nights uh, where we hook up the paddles and we try to keep ourselves in a little bit of practice. Most of our QRQ ops, uh, since we're going pretty fast, we can't go that fast on paddle, so we're using a keyboard, so it's nice to get a little paddle practice in on Wednesday nights, and that is at 8.30 USA Central Time. So that's the basic setup for using Mumble and Pulse Audio. It's nice to have this too. This is the PAVU control. On Mumble, we have it set up as the input device is microphone, so you want to make sure that's good. On the recording, you have options, so just the normal sound card, whatever yours is called, playback, would be the same thing, the normal sound card. So if you have more than one sound card, you've got options. The PAVU control is very handy for being able to switch that around. And let's see, that should be in the Mumble Center too. There it is. So just go ahead and install that. And the other one I would get would be the is which makes things easier is the GNOME Alsa mixer. This one here. So those three are the ones I've shown in the video. And the PA view, I've just pinned them to the side here, which makes it very convenient. So that makes things a little bit easier, too, as you're trying to get this set up. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to mail AA0HW via the QRZ listing for my email. Thanks, and hope to see you on ICW.